some baking in the kitchen I'm baking something chocolate for my uh, wife and my son and I'm in here making a video for you guys I figured I'd show you a few things about a hat that uh, you might not know all right let's talk about a few things about uh, the anatomy of a hat how to care for it and uh, what are some of the biggest screw-ups that most people do with their hats me included now, um, <clears throat> basically, you've got your crown, which is open like this, before a shape comes into it. This is how they all start off. Generally, a shape is put into a, a dome-shaped body or an open crowned hat. It doesn't matter, but they all start off like this. Now. If you feel for your hat, most in your hat, most likely there's kind of like little footprints in here, sort of dimples that will pop into place. Watch. Okay. I'm not even looking, I'm just feeling it popped into place. Okay, this is what's steamed into this crown. It's not exactly a beautiful hat shape, but that's what I've got in it right now. Now the original shape is in there somewhere too. If I look, it was like a center crease, something like that. I might have just popped into place. You can feel it. If you open up your hat, steam it all open like this, sometimes you could just pop. It'll go right back to the original crease because it was blocked in there under high pressure and stuff. Um, but what I'm getting at is if you don't know what to do with your hat, there's generally a shape that's in there already. Let me show you with another hat. All right. Open it up like this. If you don't know what to do with these creases, feel for it. Tap it like this. There we go. We got a center crease shaped like an almond or something. And then here's a, a pinch on the side. I'm just pressing. Okay. Kind of a, a D. D lying on its belly kind of shape here. The other side. Okay. So there's two pinches and a center crease that are locked into this hat here. It's basically, you know, the lighting is bad here. 
But uh, this is what was blocked into this hat. And yeah, you could do this every day and distort it and distort it. But if you open it up like this, you can see what's truly blocked into that hat. Now, a lot of times, if your hat dries in a grip shape, that's what it's going to pop to. Like my black hat here, its permanent, you know, shape that it's popping back to is kind of messed up. You can see the shape is, you know, it's kind of like a distorted football, but yeah, it's not perfect. Uh, that probably comes from just being in that shape so long, but what I'm getting at is that these little footprints are in there for good. Now, this also means when you put your hat to bed at night and it's wet, you should make sure this is in its correct place. Because if it's open, or if it's in a grip or whatever, that wet hat will dry into that new shape now. So make sure it's in the stock shape. A good way to find out what stock is, again, is open it up, feel for the middle and the side pinches, it should pop right into place. Okay. So there you go. As far as the brim, it's most likely a snap brim. So you want it to be in its up position and off the tabletop. We've talked about this many times. Your hat should be stored like this, hung up, things like that. Now, getting back to the anatomy of a hat. Um, the bands. A lot of people are into skinny bands, leather bands. They don't like the big wide bands. The reason that the wide band is there, it's strictly functional. If you notice, most of these hats have a dark band. It's black or brown or navy or something really dark and wide, a few fingers. The reason is, is because that's the part that's here making contact with your head, only that part. So eventually, years down the road, if you manage to sweat through the sweat band, the lining, the felt, everything, your sweat salt and stuff hit here and for ten dollars to let's say forty five dollars you could change your band depending on if you want a regular clip-on band or to a custom-made you know tailor-made band by a really good hat maker it's cheap to get a band changed but the idea is the hat lives on and you change the band so this takes the the dirt that takes the brunt of it it should be wide it should be dark now, if you have a thin band, it's strictly for looks, like a Stratoliner band, it's not the worst thing in the world, but eventually, if you do sweat through here, you might have to change it to a wider band down the road. It could be decades. Uh, if you notice, I don't have sweat on any of my hats, so a lot of these are 10, 20 years old, uh, 10, 15, 20, and you know, I get a hat every year, so my hats are very old, and I don't sweat through them. So some people will never sweat through them, other people will sweat in a day, uh, a week, a year, five years, ten years. It depends if there's leather in there, uh, a piece of cloth, a ribbon. That's going to make a big deal. How much you wear the hat once a week, seven times a week, just for occasions or every day. Do you work in it and sweat in it every day? Do you sweat a lot? There's no way to tell how long your hat will last. But if you want it to last a long time, Change the bands when you start to see salt here. Don't let it get beyond there. If it gets onto the brim like a dark, you, you, it's too late. We can't clean that. If it gets up here, too late. If you see it peeking in right over here, the sweat, we can't really clean that. Um, so, prevention is the key. There's other pads too. We have something we call a sweat pad. Cap Banu. If you go on www.jjhatcenter.com, you'll see it called Sweatband for $5. And you stick that up in the front here, and that will keep sweat from even touching your hat. It's good to use that, again, towards the end of the hat's life, not at the beginning, um, because they stay wet. Where leather, you can dry it with a cloth, it's sanitary. The sweat pads stay wet, and they get funky, but they do protect that. So you can keep changing them when they get messed up, you know, they're five bucks. Change them two, three times a season, maybe at most. Um, yeah, okay, the bands. We talked about the pinches. The flange of the hat is the part that generally gets out of shape. Most likely it's from keeping your hat on its brim, so don't store it on its brim a lot. Um, keep your brim in the up position and either hang it 
from a hook, hang it from um, a doorknob, hang it from a coat rack, uh, or put your hat upside down, but make sure the brim is floating in the air and no weight on on the brim. That will protect this curve. Um, that allows you to go down. So if you wear your hat down, you need it to go nicely up. So in other words, the only way to get a hat to go down nice is to have a nice up curve. Once this up curve gets flattened out, there is almost no flipping up and down anymore. There's no snap. So we protect it by keeping it up in the air. And we don't really mess with it, you know, when they're wet, except for maybe straightening it out once. And that's it. The next day, if it's hanging or if it's inverted, a wet hat or a dry hat, there'll be no surprises. But if you keep a wet hat like this, yeah, most likely from gravity, things will start to soften. It'll loosen up and give away because there's a stiffener holding this brim up right now, you know. All right, that's about it. What else can we talk about? Um, we've talked about the wind cord before. Wind cord is this little thing here that's on some hats, not a lot of hats. I don't think we have to go over the wind cord again. Hat linings is linings are usually a big issue. Um, hat linings they tend to bunch up and get all bunchy and stuff. Now the problem with that is people consider it a repair. And here, let me just grab a hat over here and stuff. Okay. Alright. Um, with linings, we get people coming in saying, I have a problem with my hat, can you fix it? And what happened is the silk lining got all bunched up inside. Now this is super easy. It's not a repair. It's nothing you got to bring your hat in for. Um, they just get bunched up. Okay, you don't have to attach it or sew it or glue it or anything. You just got to steam it out, shake it in front of the uh, steam, pull your lining out, steam it out so it's a nice sort of a cylinder shape, like a can, have, um, yeah, like a, a barrel shape. Open up the leather like this, flip it open. Open up your crown, dome it out, okay. Just place the lining inside the hat and put the leather back. If you steamed it out, it'll have a nice shape exactly like your crown. There'll be no problems. You don't have to attach it. You don't have to glue it or anything. If you don't feel good about that, you can attach it by using a couple of pieces of duct tape or some uh, craft glue, you know, like the really just something very un... you don't want to use something thick and glop it on, you want to just wipe it. So you could use either a hot glue stick, you could use any kind of Crafts glue, Elmer's glue, but you don't want it to get gloppy like big balls of it, because you'll be able to feel that. Just wipe it on the inside, then put your, your lining in, just a couple of dots or something, or a couple of lines. Other than that, you don't even need to attach it, just only if the, the uh, lining gives you trouble and moves around a lot. That's the only reason you'd want to glue it. Um, basically, they're disposable. They're like 10 or 15 bucks, the silk linings. And when your hat starts getting funky, you pull it out, you throw it away, you get a new one. Uh, we could get you a new lining. You could try washing it. Just hand wash it with some, you know, soap in the sink. Uh, put some water through it, you know. Uh, dry it with no heat. I've never heard anybody doing it, but you probably can do it. Uh, make sure there's no heat when it's drying, put it on a towel, and then steam it, you know, if it dries, wrinkle it. Um, you could try washing your linings. Never done it before. I usually would just throw my linings away. I don't use them. That's why I'm not demonstrating with the lining right now. Alright, let's talk about rolling your hat now. Rolling your hat is pretty easy. Here, I'm going to demonstrate with this one. To roll your hat, you're going to open it like this first. Rule number one is that it has to, has to be dry. It can't be wet. Okay, open the crown, turn the brim down, all the way down. So it's just bell shaped. This is how you roll the hat that's crushable. Okay, it's dome shaped and this is going down, turn not up now, all down, just like a bell. The next thing, the long way, this way, the long way, Picture a line, okay, and fold the hat in half, just like this, brim to brim. 
Okay, and then flatten it like this. Squeeze aside, so you're left with a U shape. You see what I did? Just squeeze it. In. You got a U shaped hat now. Okay, now do a roll like this. Not crazy tight. Let the hat guide you. Roll it. Okay, see everything is round. There's nothing pinched tight. Nowhere to leave a crease. Now, this could go in your pocket. It can go in your breast pocket, your sleeve, a, a bag that's loose, a gym bag. But if you want that in something tight, it's got to go in a box first, a little shoe box or a tennis ball can or something. Uh, you can't squash it. Yeah, so I generally just keep it in my jacket, my pocket. Yeah. When I get on the subway, I stick it in my either my bag or my pocket, and then when I get back off the train, you open it up you're good to go. This, that's where those footprint pinches come in, remember? Just tap it, tap it, tap it, quick. You've got your pinches in center crease, put it on your head, bam, you're ready to go. All right, let's play the guys out. Smoothie from Jay 